Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Chapter 14 has been released and my initial take on the episode is meh. While there were some really big moments in chapter 14 that I thoroughly enjoyed, something about this episode felt weak and even kinda low budget fan filmy at times to me. After a second watch, my feelings on the episode softened and I enjoyed it much more than my first watch of it but yeah, I think this is the weakest episode of the season for me. Additionally, the title of chapter 14 left no room for surprises or shocks with the ending as I immediately knew Grogu would wind up in the clutches of Moff Gideon once I saw the title flash onto the screen. I think my biggest issue falls in the directing of the episode, but we'll talk more about that later on. For now, without hemming and hawing too much, let's talk about the top 5 moments from the episode. Starting with number 5, Din and Grogu arrive on Tython. I really enjoyed Din and Grogu's interaction on the Razorcrest as they flew towards Tython. I could listen to Grogu cooing and making noises all day long. I also love how emotional Din got when speaking to Grogu about possibly parting ways with him. Din loves Grogu just as much as we do and I love that about this series. The duo soon arrive on Tython and I appreciated Din's comment to Grogu about having to travel with the windows down and then the two make their way to the Seeing Stone via Din's jetpack. Awesome touch there. I was also happy to see Tython depicted as another Earth-like planet. So far in canon, we've only seen Tython in Dr. Aphra, where the planet was depicted as if it was another Hoth. As someone who played Star Wars The Old Republic for years, I definitely appreciated that it's not just another Hoth, since Tython is depicted as a very lush and Earth-like planet in that game and in Legends continuity. Once Din and Grogu arrive at the Seeing Stone, Grogu doesn't seem to be doing much of anything, but Din's attention is caught by something quite interesting we'll get to momentarily. When Din's attention returns to Grogu, we see the youngling has begun to meditate and there's this blue force field encircling him and beaming up into the sky, as engravings on the seeing stone light up. Two things came to me. One, I was very much reminded of when Cal Kestis meditates in Jedi Fallen Order. I have no clue if that's what Favreau and company were going for, but that's the vibe I got. That would make sense if there's a possibility Cal appears in this series, which I'm all in favor of. Also, as mentioned in my recap video of Chapter Chapter 13, the seeing stone on Tython is very reminiscent of the stone that Luke and Rey used on Octo in The Last Jedi, which makes me wonder if we'll start to see in canon Tython being revealed as one of, if not, the birthplaces of the Jedi Order as it was in Legends. I think that'd be really cool. Maybe instead of the Jedi Order being created on Octo, the Order and some of its predecessors sprung up in multiple places throughout the galaxy. That'd be super awesome and would allow for Lucasfilm to introduce other ancient Jedi worlds. Bro, make it happen, Lucasfilm. While Grogu begins to meditate, Slave One descends from the sky, bringing us to our number four baller moment. Hello, Mr. Fett. I was really excited when I saw Slave One swoop down from the sky. I even shouted, hell yeah, at my TV when I saw the starship. Boba Fett soon appears and tells Din that he wants his armor and that he's just a simple man making his way through the galaxy, just as Jango Fett told Obi-Wan in Attack of the Clones, which was excellent. I also appreciated that Din asked Boba if he took the creed, referring to the way of the Mandalore and the rules that govern the children of the Watch, the cult Din is a part of. To this Boba says that he gives his allegiance to no one which I loved. I was very worried Din and the child would be in trouble, but was happily surprised when Boba Fett and an alive Fennec Shand appeared and the situation de-escalated. I'm also glad Fennec Shand is alive and will be helping Din as the season continues because I think she's a character that has a ton of potential. Her cybernetic stomach makes me hold out hope that Valance could be another character that could appear in the Mandalorian at some point, which would be so damn dope. We soon learn that the bounty on Grogu has significantly risen and Boba and Fennec agree to help keep the child safe in exchange for his armor, taking us to our number four baller moment, Din, Boba, and Fennec kicking ass and taking names. So this is where the episode started to lose me. I think a large part of this falls on the director, Robert Rodriguez. I thoroughly enjoyed seeing Din, Boba, and Fennec fighting stormtroopers, but this entire scene felt as if something was off. I felt as if I was watching a fan-made Star Wars film. The armor the stormtroopers wore seemed weird, overly clean at times, and some armor looked like it didn't even fit some of the troopers. While Boba jacking stormtroopers up and being an all-around badass was super cool, 
especially once he's donning his infamous armor, I thought some of Tamir Morrison's mannerisms and facial expressions, coupled with some of the photography during the fight scenes with the stormtroopers, just felt over the top. I also felt like this part of the episode lacked a quality that I've come to expect with other directors of this series so far. Something just felt off when I watched that scene and, during my first watch of the episode, I stopped and wondered if this episode felt weird or if I was being overly critical, which is never a good thing if you have to wonder about that. During my second run through the episode, my issues weren't as apparent as they were during my initial watch, but yeah, that part of the episode still feels somewhat lackluster and wonky to me. Anyway, once Din realizes that he has to buy Grogu time, we arrive at our number two baller moment, the Dark Troopers capture Grogu. Dude, who would have thought the Razor Crest would be destroyed? I certainly didn't and was utterly surprised by that. Moff Gideon then launches four Dark Troopers who land on the Hill of the Seeing Stone and capture Grogu before Din and Fennec can make it to the child. When Boba Fett tails the Dark Troopers, I also appreciated how shook he and Fennec were that the Empire wasn't completely defeated and is still around. Din then returns to the wreckage of the Razor Crest, finds the Beskar spear he acquired last episode, and Boba Fett reveals to Din that Jango Fett was a foundling and fought in the Mandalorian Civil Wars. Which, hell yeah. In Legends, the Mandalorian Civil Wars was a conflict that broke out in 60 BBY between Death Watch and a group known as the True Mandalorians, so it's cool this conflict has been brought back into canon continuity. I also appreciate that Jango and Boba Fett are indeed Mandalorians, so we can now put to rest the debate about whether Jango and Boba were Mandalorian or not. Din gives Boba back his armor, and the fellow Mandalorian and Fennec agree they're still in Din's debt until Grogu has been returned safely to Din. The trio head to Navarro via Slave One, and Din speaks to Cara Dune, now a Marshal of the New Republic, and Cara Dune agrees to give Din info on where he can find Mayfeld so that Din can break him out of prison and use his Imperial knowledge to get Grogu back. I appreciate that we see some familiar faces in the mugshots Cara Dune looks through, such as a Red Key Raider, two individuals that look a lot like the Nikto and the small alien that tried to steal Grogu from Din in Chapter 10, as well as a Quarren and an Aqualish. We then arrive at our number one baller moment, Grogu and Baby Binders. Just as I discussed last week about Grogu's interactions with Din and how you could view them as defiant at times, here's a little man using Force abilities that are absolutely associated with the dark side, like Force choking the Stormtroopers, all while Moff Gideon smilingly approves. Our boy is walking a very fine line with the Force abilities he's using. Gideon soon ignites the Darksaber, while an exhausted Grogu reaches out towards the ancient lightsaber, and Gideon makes a comment about Grogu not being able to play with such things, which, hot damn, does Gideon want Grogu not just for his blood, but also as a potential Force-attuned enforcer for him or the Empire? Maybe for the Sith? This could be wild-ass speculation on my part, but that'd be quite interesting. Gideon then orders a trooper to stun Grogu and orders his comms officer to contact Dr. Pershing once the light cruiser is out of hyperspace so you know it's gonna pop off. Seeing a stunned Grogu in baby binders made me want to jack up Gideon, that slimy son of a bitch. As mentioned, my first time through the episode, I was surprisingly underwhelmed with it, even though some wild stuff happened. Second time through, I enjoyed it more, but still had some issues, specifically with Rodriguez's directing. But part of that is that The Mandalorian has set such a high bar for being awesome, so I think my expectations and excitement for what the season has been kind of had something to do with me being underwhelmed. I'm glad this was a shorter episode because I don't think it needed to be any longer than it was. Hopefully the next two episodes will be closer to an hour since we know things are going to get wild. Also, in regards to Grogu meditating, will we find out this season who might have felt or heard his meditation on Tython? Will it be Cal Kestis, Luke Skywalker, Ezra Bridger, or or someone else entirely. To be honest, that is something I'm extremely excited about and can't wait to see where the story goes. Lastly, what kind of ship will Din wind up with at the end of the season or in season 3? That's something I'm also extremely intrigued by. All in all, this was an alright episode that had some awesome moments and some moments that didn't land for me, but that's okay because we know it's going to pop off in the next two weeks. But what did you guys think? Who will answer Grogu's force call, so to speak? Let us know down in the comments. Want more Star Wars content? Check out some of our other videos. Please like and subscribe and stay nerdy.